um, not necessarily a requirement, uh, but it is for wetlands alteration permit. Um, and there is a wish, um, and I, I think perhaps the town staff would really like us to handle these as one, one issue, one but two separate issues, uh, at least not separate them. Um, I guess that we'll start, first of all, with, with questions of, of uh, completeness. Uh, while it pertains to the wetlands alteration, I, I think just for the sake of keeping on track and trying to move along, if we could step down through the list, if, the, if uh, perhaps Maureen, if you could go down through, uh, and I'm referring to the attachment two of January 19, uh, wetlands alteration permit application complete list check checklist. And any uh, questions the board members might have uh, as we go down through that. Again, I think uh, Mr. Dewan hit most of the items under item B. Uh, my concern was that um, because of where the buildable area is, uh, it's conceivable that someone might want to leap over the wetland area instead of running utilities directly up the driveway. Um, he states that, that they plan on putting utilities in the driveway, um, in which case no additional area would be disturbed. Uh, under item E, uh, the vegetative cover, the, the application did include um, in the list of vegetation that was identified an obligate plant, which if there was more than an acre of that would constitute a critical wetland. We have further evidence tonight that, that there was five square feet of cattail and not an acre. So that would not constitute that area being designated as, as a critical wetland area. I interject at this point and we'll tie in with the next point too. As I assume the applicants, um, people looked only at this lot, though. Do we feel comfortable yet that this is not a small part of an acre or larger wetland? Um, you're correct. If if this was a wetland, if this was a veg an area of vegetation that um, crossed over boundaries to another area, if the whole wetland is at least an acre in size, then um, it would be regulated, but since it was five square feet, I, I strongly doubt that the five square feet was right on the property line. It sounds like it was just in a particularly low point. Do you know anything about this, Terry? Basically, the point is, we're making the assumption that the obligate wetland plant of five square feet was located in the middle of an area of non-obligate wetland plants. I think it's, uh, from my observation, it's a very isolated incident. Right. Okay. Yeah. It, it's just if, if it was, if it was the, the, the very minute tip of a large wetland that extended off the yeah. property, that then it would still be considered a wetland. Of I understand. It's clearly not the case. It's, it's difficult as a board member when you see two isolated pockets of wetlands. I have no idea what they do, and I. I would certainly defer to staff if you think what we have is adequate. I, I, in looking at the zoning map, and, and we refer to the zoning map only for broad generalizations, um, we certainly um, need to use these types of more detailed maps on site-by-site -site basis. But as you extend towards the back of this parcel, there is a large wetland area. But um, what you need to do is identify the mass of critical wetland mm -hmm. and then measure out from the buffer. And it appears that this area is is an abutting wetland protection zone and not the actual critical wetland. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item F again, um, there's sometimes some confusion when an applicant prepares an application that looks at federal wetland definitions, state wetland definitions, and then our local definitions. And it's important when using our local definitions that you don't just rely on hydric soils, but that you um, go a little bit further and define the very poorly drained versus the poorly drained hydric soils. And the applicant with this letter from, from Mr. Sweet has identified that all the hydric soils fall into the poorly drained category rather than the very poorly drained category. Again, if it was very poorly drained, it would be considered a critical wetland. Uh, item I uh, is not an item that I would consider an issue of completeness. It was just an item that I thought uh, I would raise for the board's attention at this early date in case there was any issue that, that the applicant would need to address for a future meeting. Um, and under J, uh, I would recommend that there, there be a building envelope delineated, the uh, wetlands submission requirements 
uh, require a buildable area or the building footprint. And the applicant appears in the submission this evening to have identified a, a building envelope. Um, and on again on the public access waiver portion, there is no finding that's needed for completeness, and there is no requirement for a public hearing. That's at the discretion of the board. Are there any questions? Not on completeness. I guess what I'd like to do, um, and, and I'll ask for consensus uh, how you want to go through the voting. If you want to vote first on, on completeness, and then move on to the other issues, or, or um, perhaps complete the discussion. Um, I'm trying to think perhaps we should first take a vote on uh, completeness issues for the wetlands permit. Uh, then what I'd like to see us do is, is, is after that vote, uh, assuming an affirmative vote, we proceed and, and give the applicant uh, our best shot of, of uh, comments and questions. Um, we do have to come back for, for a public hearing anyway. I'd like to be able to give the applicant as much of the information they need to, to put together for that next meeting. Yes, the uh, middle of next Thursday or Friday, I believe. Thursday at noon. Yeah. Hmm. Short sure. um, We might throw out also um, if the planning board is uh, members are looking for um, uh, site visit, if that would be advantageous. Uh, we don't always have, but sometimes do have, uh, especially with the wetlands permit. Um, applications, uh, alteration permits. My one is that the Conservation Commission has been out on the site. Notice the note uh, that they had been there uh, earlier this month. Why don't we proceed? Uh, are the questions, let's, let's keep it right now to uh, the completeness issue on the wetlands alteration permit. Any questions on uh, completeness? If there are none, do I hear a motion? If not, do I not hear a motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would move that the application be deemed complete for the wetlands alteration permit. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Juan Perez of the Cantal Corporation for a wetlands alteration permit for lot U. 469A, located at the end of Silver Drive, be deemed complete. It's been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any uh, further discussion? None appearing. All those in favor of the motion as read, please raise your right hand. Those opposed, it's a unanimous vote. To move along now. Um, to other issues, other questions. Again, I'd like to see uh, perhaps if you have a list of items that you'd like to see next month, if you have uh, questions, uh, just so that the applica applicant knows our concerns, uh, no surprises next month. Any comments, questions? Uh, one Steven? quick question. Um, I understand this is part of a larger parcel of land. Um, I don't think I read anywhere um, what the rest of that land is going, what's going to happen to the rest of that land. Uh, I'm Juan Perez. I live in Wells Road. I lived there for uh, over 20 years in the town. Uh, it is a seven-acre parcel, uh, and uh, the rest of that parcel will be set aside and uh, be made part of the other uh, larger piece uh, that is owned. Uh, there are no plans in the near future for any of that land to be uh, developed at this time. So, so you, that the remaining the part, excuse me? You're going to add this on to your own? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So that part will become uh, part of the other larger piece that uh, I own. Owned by yourself or by Cantal Corporation? Uh, it's owned by a different corporation. Yeah. How ma um, what's the total acreage of contiguous parcels? Uh, own under ownership of, of yourself or, or your entities that you own? About 175 acres. Does do do uh, those 175 acres have um, access or frontage on other streets and roads? Uh, there's a parcel that uh, has um, 
access through Wells Road, and then uh, the other parcel has access through um, Sawyer Road. Okay. Does this par does this parcel? Um, I'm trying to think about the the Gabriel. No. 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 I am on a butter with the Gabriel on the other side. On the other side. Okay. And I understand that she was here last month. Right. And, right. Know, I remember. I remember seeing your name. She has a that. turnaround on my property, and you know, ah, okay. we had an agreement and an understanding on that and so forth. I'm sorry, Steve. I answered my question. Okay. Mark. Uh, yes, I have a question for Mr. Dewan. Could you uh, address? the northerly edge of the building envelope and uh, how whether or not or why it is straight and does not seem to sort of parallel the edge of the wetland in a sort of uniform setback from the wetland where uh, it's it a very arbitrary line I simply went up 135 feet to a point near where the each of the <coughs> line intersected the wetland and simply went due west um, Easiest, I guess, to lay out a, a an envelope like that on the ground mm -hmm. if it had if it, if it consisted of uh, squared lines as opposed to a curvilinear line. Mm -hmm. It'd be a lot easier to, to describe also legally. Okay, uh, I guess I have a question for Maureen on that one. Then uh, another project which we've reviewed recently. Uh, at the highlands, the wetland setbacks were indicated in that in order to conform to NRPA, they had to be 25 feet uh, plus two times the slope of the land. Is that something that would not apply in this case because it's not a I'm not sure uh, that RP1 and it's only RP2? Yeah, I'm not sure that um, NRPA is still using the two times the slope formula anyway. Um, but in that case, I, I believe those, those were wet or wetlands. Um, but I'm not sure that this doesn't require some kind of NRPA permit. Have We're yet. assuming that it will. Okay. Um, it's certainly within the purview of the board to ask for a setback from the wetland. And I had one more question in terms of the uh, septic system. Has there been a septic design done? And approved? Is, is there an HHE 200, an evaluation that's been, it's been an evaluation that prepared not based on the test pits? Has there been an HHE 200 form? Uh, Richard Sweet, who was the soil engineer, uh, did the uh, testing and he designed the uh, the, uh, the septic system has been designed. Yeah. I guess along those lines. Um, I didn't, I didn't see it in, in the, applic the, uh, the application, um, but I, I'd like to see the soils profiles of the five test pits. Uh, I guess the reason behind that request is to make sure that we do have a billable. So has it been reviewed by uh, the uh, code enforcement officer, Cape Elizabeth? The uh, testing uh, time? Yeah, the, the, no. the step. I, I The HHE 200 form that, that is typically used. I see. Uh, yeah, we've given you two ad additional test pits that were done in the wetlands area, but we do not include the five that were done for the on-site disposal right. site. As one board member, I'd like to see those. Um, the two that you have here, um, did Norman Scott fill those out? I believe so. I'm just trying to follow test pit two. <coughs> Is test pit two in the middle of the driveway near the stream bed? There's a one down here and two of them right there. Okay. That's, that's the one that shows the groundwater at the surface. In other words, zero inches to limiting factor. Basically, means standing water. The question that relates to that, and as long as we're talking about test of two, and I, I think I can see a, a two one here. You have this this uh, blow up section, the one inch equals twenty feet, 
Does that test pit that I see at, at just below station uh, 2 plus 0, 0 um, that coincide with the test pit that's up here in the, the flagpole that's section of the flag line? That's the number 2 right there, okay. the where the ground uh, limit factor of 0 okay. is noted. And that is the same test pit that I see in the, the one in 50? This is this. Right there, okay. That's right. I just want to make sure. The request that I would have is, is to make sure that next month you have the, the filled out HHG 200 with your five test pits. The reason being is, is that uh, we're looking at this as a proving a lot in, in, in order to make it buildable. Uh, it has to have an approvable site. Um, I have several questions or comments. See if I have a sensible order. Is it um, your intention, Mr. Press, that once you get approval, this will simply be put on the market and you will not be constructing the, the roadway or putting in utilities? Right. I will not be uh, building the uh, market. There's a couple that. Uh, Okay, I, I as one board member then would like to see when you come back um, evidence from the Portland Water District, one that you will be tying into the 30-inch line. You said you would be obtaining that. And also the letter that we do have from them indicates they don't have a problem unless I think there was more than one feet or two feet of fill in a certain area. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to make sure that they look at the plans you were proposing and can indicate to us that they find these acceptable. You know, not that they know your, your idea, but actually are approving the plan. Um, I'd like to see a note added to the plan that if the phone, utility, cable, whatever is going to go in, if it is intended to be in the roadway, that it will specifically be stated as such on the plan. And I don't know if you need to give us more um, indication of the location, but I want that to be clear to whoever's purchasing this lot. Um, the Portland Water District letter also mentioned a blow-off pipe and that you can't interfere with that. That's correct. Yeah, right. The blow-off pipe, um, the small building in the plant off the property. And that's the blow-off? That's right. Okay. Um, but Maureen, maybe in a couple of these you might help me. S stuff like the um, Army Corps permit and the DE permit if required do we need to see those before, given that this is a wetlands permit we're issuing? Um, let me check the ordinance. On um, subdivision approvals, typically the board will request to have evidence of those approvals granted prior to granting subdivision approval from the town. Um, I'm just going to have to check the wetlands okay. section. Okay. The other thing you could probably answer while you're checking is, um, would it be either our responsibility or our right to um, require a written erosion control plan, like delineation of the siltation fencing? Yeah, you have, under the wetlands regulations, you can require um, a very detailed erosion control plan. I w again, since this is going to be turned over to someone who may not be familiar with these things, Mr. Dewan, if you could indicate, uh, to me at least a minimum, where siltation fencing would be placed, and preferably a written plan, and specifications for seeding and so forth that we'll would be appropriate. probably add that right to the drawing then okay um let me see if i have any other questions while maureen is researching that and i assume that building envelope will show up on our final plan that's correct do you have any com um, comments either yourself or um maureen on the conservation commission walk did they i believe that they are going to be submitting written a written memo to the board with their recommendations. And I think my final comment, besides any um, details or comments that the engineer had that you might need to revise on the plan, I can't think of what those... There were a few minor things that Fred Moore in his review of January 12th noted. Yes. Okay, any, any of those that would need to be on there, but there's... Um, you're requesting some waivers on the width of the roadway and the um, radius, oh. and I... Yeah, the radius one uh, down here right now is simply a turnaround. Yeah. I don't know what the, the radius is. 
I guess we would like to propose that if you require a 20 foot radius, that we only be required to sit on one side, so there's only going to be traffic coming from one direction, emergency traffic. All I would ask as this board member is that the fire chief approves what you propose and you're proposing 14 feet and his memo says no less than 15 feet out of the wetland just make sure that the fire chief agrees with your final proposal is there a memo from the fire chief i think didn't we have it yes yes um he, he had said the driveway could be 12 feet when it goes off Silva Drive, but should expand to 15 feet after the first 50 feet because of the length. I think the first 50 feet will get you in trouble with the wetlands, but because the wetlands is past 50 feet away, isn't it? Um, well, like this the, is about 50 feet right here. Right. Only a few more feet before you get into the wetlands. Okay. Then if you could just have yeah, a mutually beneficial arrangement with him. Uh, he like conveyed to someone in my office that uh, 14 feet would be the width that he'd require and 12 feet in the wetlands. We're also adding two feet of shoulder on either side of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. In response to your question, yes. uh, under the submission requirements, the last submission requirement for wetlands alteration permit is that the town planner may require additional information as needed, such as a study of flood erosion or other hazards at the site and the effect of any protective measures that might be taken to reduce such hazards and other information deemed necessary to evaluate the proposed use in terms of the goals and standards of the wetlands provisions of this ordinance. So I would interpret that last requirement to be broad enough to allow you to request uh, evidence of approvals from other bodies. Do you have an expected time that you'll receive those? Or have you applied? We have not applied for them yet, no. I, I don't know. A couple comments that I have. One reiterates um, Judy's point is uh, to make sure that we have in writing from the Portland Water District, um, their uh, concurrence with tapping into their water line in any other conditions that they might uh, uh, require. Also, on the um, the turnaround being in the town right away and and and, and, uh, and so forth, I'd also like something from Bob Malley in writing. I think in general this board is pretty sensitive to our town uh, staff and, and their wishes and you know uh, whatever you can get from writing from the chief of police, uh, chief of uh, fire chief and public works director. Um, we talked to Mr. Malley about four o'clock this afternoon. Okay. Okay. A little late to get a letter from him, but okay. yeah, he didn't uh, see any problems. Okay, as long as that's uh, the as far as the reducing the radius. Um, on the entryway, I think is where you um, mentioned that. It, again, if if that is okay with, with the Chief McGoldrick um, to have it only on the westerly side, um, then let him so state. If you can just get a comment from him, uh, but I, that would certainly be a minimum radius for that corner. I think the comment was well taken as far as the, the, the driveway, the design of this driveway to this house. It's not like all the other dri driveways in the neighborhood. That's comment, yeah. That, that's why you're here, because uh, it, it's, a, it's a different driveway. Um, I would just mention the bo board and, and, and again look for consensus um, that in lieu of a site walk we might uh, wait for the w written response from the Conservation Commission um, on their report of their site walk. Um, Leave it open if, if you'd like to take a look at the site. Well, sure. there's snow there. I don't know how much good it would do us anyway. Well, we, we certainly have taken wetlands alteration permit site walks uh, in the middle of the winter time. The flag uh, will certainly show up. Yeah. yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's usually extremely chilly and very unpleasant and, <laughs> and quick. <laughs> quick. No, don't want to deter anybody from taking one of those miserable walks. But. <laughs> The uh, one last question or comment that I have, 
just for the clarification of this constriction at the 28 inch culvert my concern being if back to the stream bed again this site has a 36 inch culvert the next one downstream is 28 inches um, maybe I'm missing something in, in, in the write-up but I the last thing I want is, is to further contribute to any backup onto another person's property uh, by anything that we may Exactly. In fact, when, when uh, Steve did the initial design, I believe he had a 32-inch pipe right there, which would have handled the storm, but it would have required a little bit of backup, and he felt that that would have backed up water onto the abutting property. Mm -hmm. and so we went to the next size up, just for an added measure of safety. Uh, could I ask Maureen to clarify the intent of her comment? Um, I was just reading through that study that you submitted, and... I was unclear as to exactly what was going on. My concern is exactly what, what the chair has stated, that you'll be putting in a culvert. I guess I guess what I need to know is, does water back up there now? And this is back up. the 28-inch the 28 yeah, culvert, here. without any construction, um, without you going in and putting in a driveway and, and a single-family lot. What is the existing situation? Does water ten is there a detention of water there now? And then the question is, will will this either create the tension or increase the tension when you put in a driveway and develop a lot? And if it does, then I think we do have a problem. Yeah, I believe that Fred Moore has reviewed that, and he's come to the conclusion that it's properly sized. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. Um, it's just this board has been very sensitive in the past with, with any, any detention downstream on other people's property. And if it's an existing situation, then we've got an existing slow situation. Um, but, I mean, there's no plans for the town to correct any size deficiencies in culverts in the future. That, therefore, we've basically got a design to existing conditions. And I have not spoken with Fred specifically about okay. this. I just picked it out and still wanted to report. I guess part of the confusion is it, it's not clear to me is if this is a, a kind of a free, fast-flowing little stream here that adding a 36-inch culvert won't speed it up anymore. Is this, however, you know, I don't know how wide that's going to be, 16 feet, whatever, of culvert, if that will really move so much more water in there that it could right. back in, up. In other words, does this current wetlands act like water through a sponge? In other words, it slowly moves through there no. over a wide area? Not at or, this particular point. Or it's a very well-defined channel at that point. It's maybe two to three feet wide, and this culvert will simply be laying on what is now the bottom of that stream channel. Okay. I, I think as long as we have a very clear statement from your engineer saying that the, there, there will be no effect on the yeah, downstream. I, yeah, I believe we've made that, and I believe it's been reviewed by, by Fred Moore. Okay. I have no other questions. Uh, I have one further question. Sure uh, maybe Maureen could help me with this one. Uh, relating to my earlier question about the northern uh, building envelope boundary, uh, is building envelope synonymous with uh, a no cut no fill condition an absolute no, no disturbance that's because that's I, I think uh, I think that's a point that could deserve clarification in the final plan that that northerly line there is a is a no cut no fill is, that, is that a setback line for rather than a house setback where line. you grade beyond the house into the into that wetland I think yeah that's what, what the board has the board has actually in the past uh, used building envelopes quite effectively in defining exactly how much area is going to be disturbed during construction and uh, we use a building envelope, but the thing that building on the activities allowed inside and outside the building envelope have to be defined, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, but usually we define a building envelope as the area where an applicant may do whatever clearing is necessary, have their lawn area, build their house, um, and the area outside the building envelope is, is considered a no clear, uh, no cut area where we allow um, the installation of a driveway um, the installation of utilities and uh, cutting of diseased and dying vegetation. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but again, that has to be, there's nothing in our ordinance that regulates that. It has to be included on each plan. Uh, further, you, you did ask about the setback and you, you mentioned the highlands. Um, my, my memory serves that the setbacks for many of the wetlands and the highlands were requested by the planning board and were not required by other uh, agencies. And it was, it was something that we required as part of our own ordinances. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any further discussion, comments, questions? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion for the board? Judy? Um, I propose the following motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Juan Perez of the Cantel Corporation for a public access waiver for lot U 469A located at the end of Silva Drive be tabled to the regular February 1993 meeting. Be it further ordered that a public hearing is scheduled for the regular February 16th, 1993 meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? I just ask the applicant if, if it's, you feel fairly clear what we're looking for for the, the next meeting. I believe so. Okay. I'll talk to Maureen to get additional okay. insight. <laughs> okay. Um, any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, motions as uh, read, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? It's unanimous. I think we passed two motions at once, but we'll say that's a, a two-part motion. Thank you very much, and uh, see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. The question asked, uh, do we want to set a site walk time for uh, the site? All kidding aside. <laughs> There's a terrible stare from this side. I don't see anybody jumping to. Um, I have a tent. Mm -hmm. You go. Okay, let's set up a day. I, I think it, it's. Um, it's well marked. It is. Okay. Um, I no longer carry a small. This big. Um, Saturday, January 30th, 9 o'clock. I just want to let the board know I will not be available for that. I suppose you're on vacation. Or yeah. um, for the rest of the planning board, is Saturday the 30th okay? Nine o'clock. We'll meet right at the uh, the turnaround uh, on Silver Drive. I'd ask Maureen if you could, if you're not going to be here, if you could, um, can you send out a reminder. Is that okay? Yeah. Very good. Nine o'clock in the morning. Coffee right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Um, that was our last article of business. Is there any other business to come before the board? Seeing and hearing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? And seconded. Those in favor? Right hand. I hope. The meeting is adjourned.